Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm going to cover an extensive topic that comes up all too frequently, and that is what is the formula to determine steps per inch or resolution for each axis. Now before I get involved in this video because it is detailed, you guys have to understand while I'll give the formulas out, this is not the end-all be-all way to determine your axis calibration. All this is is to get you in the ballpark. In order to perform axis calibration accurately, you need to utilize the Mach 3 calibration wizard or from Mach 4 or whatever motion control software you're using. You should be utilizing the embedded calibration wizard with that software because if you simply go to actually utilize the formulas and think you're going to be accurate with your system, most of you are going to be sadly mistaken due to the fact that you're mitigating all of the variables that are inherent of a CNC robot. And when I say all the variables, the motors have their own inaccuracies in terms of when they're mounted to your chassis. These are never seen until all of a sudden we incorporate all the machining variables that come from you assembling your CNC robot. Depending on what it's a plasma cutter, router, mill, whatever the hell it is, you're going to find that you're going to have embedded inaccuracies. And those inaccuracies are determined by the transmission, whether it be a ball screw, a lead screw, a, a pulley system, um, machining tolerances due to screw positions, thread positions. Um, all these different variables play a huge role in the assembled component. And that assembled component as a system will be directly reflected when you put these formulas in Dial them in and think, oh, you know, I'm good to go. You're not. Because when you go to measure an inch, you're going to find out you may be off 5, 10, 15 thousands, depending on the quality of the assembled robot, due to the fact that, once again, these variables are now all being reflected. Where the motor may have been perfect as far as its rotation, it's certainly not pro perfect as far as it being mounted with all these variables now actually being reflected in an assembled unit. Because the bottom line, and this is the way to always think of your system, I cannot emphasize this enough, is it is an assembled robot. You, multiple components that make up a finished robot mean nothing independently. It means absolutely nothing. You don't care about a motor by itself. You don't care about a driver by itself. We don't care about the ball screws by themselves. We care about everything when it's formulated and assembled into a working robot. So... Think in those terms, and you guys will be set. Now, what I'm going to do as well as covering these formulas is, is I'm going to link a past client of mine who went through and not only performed axis calibration, utilizing the Mach 3 calibration wizard, he actually did these steps first, then he utilized the Mach 3 calibration wizard, but he also determined his rapid rate of movement. And when I say rapid rate, we're talking about the rapids that he's able to generate without missing a step due to him staying within the operational envelope of accuracy for his system. Many missteps are created, regardless of system, due to the fact that the end user does not understand the operational envelope of his system. You cannot just arbitrarily set a rapid feed rate and expect your system inevitably to stay within that feed rate and be accurate. It does not work that way. The biggest culprit in missteps is lack of voltage. Voltage determines the power to the motors as far as speed and it's going to give them higher resolution. So many of you guys that are running 24 volts, 12 volts, you know, 18 volts, if you're running 48, you're going to see a tremendous difference in overall resolution. Now the byproduct of, of actual power supplies is heat. So factor that in to the build you're working with and always assume how much extra heat you guys are going to have on your motors. Okay, that's why G540 utilizes its actual resistors because those resistors mitigate excess amperage which once again mitigates heat. So these are things to think about on smaller motors with a lower amp rating for your particular driver. I'm discussing a G540. Again, it's arbitrary. You pick a driver and they all have their amp limitations due to that. So once again, we're going to cover the formula. We're going to cover uh, a link to you guys actually checking out the axis calibration video performed live, which I cannot emphasize enough. It's amazing what can be done when you're doing the process correctly and he does it impeccably. 
Um, once that's done, you will see at the end of that video, you'll also see him do and set up um, the actual rapid motion for his system. And how he determines that, once again, is as soon as the system starts missing steps, it's over. That's when he knows it's time to slow the system down because if it's exceeding the accuracy of the system, regardless of the transmission and the motors and everything else, it's useless. Because remember, speed without accuracy is absolutely pointless. Okay, No different than potential clients that come to me or question me about you know, how do I calibrate my system and I'll discuss with them using a precision instrument and they say they want to use a, a ruler. Or a measuring tape. Guys, let us let me explain something to you. I've never met any person in my life, and I'm just telling you the truth, who is able to read a ruler in the same exact method of another person. It's, it's an arbitrary method, and rulers may be accurate to a degree. When we're dealing with CNC robotics, you always, always, always want to stay with the most precise measuring equipment you have available. If you can't afford the proper measuring equipment, wait and save. The idea of using the robot and paying for that type of equipment is to make sure you're getting the most accuracy as close to perfect as absolutely possible. And the way to do that is the robot that's calibrated to the most precision instrument will give you the most precision machine. Okay, if your tolerance level is a thousandth of an inch, you know the actual variable you're going to see is in a thousandth of an inch. If it's ten thousandths of an inch, you just went 10 times greater in accuracy. Is the 10,000th of an inch dial test indicator more money? Absolutely, because its resolution is higher, which means your end product will give you that extra um, actual accuracy to work with. So again, keep that in mind. Machining, you pay for accuracy. If you were having a part machined and it had a 10,000th of an inch accuracy, positive negative, that's a massive difference from a thousandth of an inch. No different than your machine. So what your machine produces is based solely upon how well it's calibrated. That's why I say take your time going through. I'm putting this information out there, but it means nothing if you guys don't create a process. That being said, everything I'm discussing in this should be written down. There is no such thing as you sitting here and trying to digest this information and understand it. It will not work that way. Take your time, get your legal pad, start taking notes. Create a process for yourself. The smartest people in engineering understand that creating a process for yourself gives you an option to go back to and refer to your own notes because that's how we learn. We learn by incorporating different methods and by utilizing them all together, it streamlines the entire learning process. We're digesting it in not just a listening phase where we're watching and viewing and hearing, but we're also digesting it in writing. So try the method. Even if you've never done it before, try it. You will see it will make your entire learning curve much smoother. And that is how we do it when we engineer. We always give us a baseline. And that baseline is created by whatever the process we write down. The steps that we write down and we refer to, it takes us to the next level. This way, we mitigate chasing our own tail, which many of us have done. And again, I've dealt with many people who continuously do that because they refuse to take heed on what I'm saying with this. It is more work, no doubt. But if you want to get something out of this, it's worth all the work because it's going to save a lot of time and money in the end. So now what we're going to do is discuss the formula. As you can see here, the formula and calculation is a starting point to get into the area of steps per inch. Then you will need to use Mach 3 calibration, which I've already said. Um, formula steps per inch equals motor steps times micro stepping uh, and then divided by travel at one turn of the motor inches. So we're going to go motor steps times micro steppings divided by travel of one turn of the motor inches. Very simple. Steps per inch, guys, very, very simple. You can see we've got 200 here, and that's typically how many steps are required to rotate the motor in one inch in this particular instance, because, again, he's got an actual formula here. Micro-stepping is set at 16, 1 16th on the driver. Then uh, you're using a sprocket and chain, which is kind of arbitrary in the sense that most systems using a sprocket and chain transmission are typically from the 90s because they're waiting to be retrofitted. Uh, most guys in a similar instance would be utilizing more or less a pulley system. 
where this would directly relate to due to the fact that pulleys do have teeth on them similar to a sprocket same principle you would utilize this particular method of formula okay once again if micro stepping is set at 16 that's 1 16th on the driver uh, and you're using that sprocket and chain with a quarter inch and 12 teeth on the drive as far as pitch it's quarter inch just so we're all on the same page you have 200 times 16 how did that come up as far as being part of the formula well once again Motor revolutions is 200 steps, and then we're going times 16 because that's what the micro stepping is. And once again, once you actually get uh, the product from that, you're going to divide that actual product, and then we're going to come over here, and you're going to once again take the 12, and where the 12 came from is from the teeth on the drive, and you're going to multiply that by the 0.25 inches right here. Okay. Once you get the product and the quotient, or excuse me, the product and the product here, you're going to come up with the quotient, which again, we're going to divide the two. Once we come up with that, we're going to come over here, and this is your next part of the formula. You can see this is what we've come up with, the 3,200, then we're dividing by three, and then that breaks down to 1066.66 steps per inch. Okay, but once again, this is a direct representative of that rough estimated formula meaning this is where you can start from. Once you put this in mock, you're going to have a baseline to start from. And from that point, when we finally run the Mach 3 calibration wizard, you're going to see actually how off you are. Now, I will say this, and this is interesting to note, if you find that the machine's tolerances are really well done as far as how it's assembled and machined, this number won't be that far off. If it's majorly off, it's usually going to be lying somewhere in the machining of the system. And again, depending on certain axes, you might find are more off than others. That could be due to many different factors. Uh, if, if a bearing is shot, if something isn't machined properly, if something is not square as far as bearing blocks, that could throw these numbers for a loop. As far as you actually coming up with the formula, you did the math correctly, but you're coming up with numbers that are just crazy. As far as you actually doing the fine tuning, there is a the potential for that. So don't be shocked by that. I mean, it, it's okay as long as you get the system calibrated utilizing the Mach Free Calibration Wizard. Now that being said, if something is crazily off, you really want to go through that and look and see in that particular axis. Once again, I'm giving you more work to do. Go through the axis and find out is everything fine. If you notice the bearings are good, if, if the bearing seatment and the bearing blocks are good, you know you're good. If all the holes look like they're aligned properly, if you go to try some of the holes and they're rough or the actual uh, tapping in certain holes for mounts are not correct, you're going to find that it will be reflected in your actual calibration or your formula. Because the formula is the mathematical formula, but again, once these variables come into play, it can throw things for a loop. So. That's where you definitely, definitely want to, you know, evaluate your time. If you run into any headaches, which most guys don't, but there is always the potential thereof. And things to look out as your system is you're actually going through and doing maintenance over, you know, maybe five, ten hours of use, which I recommend just so everybody knows, if your system is running for ten hours, you need to do a PM, which is a preventative maintenance on the system. These guys that run their systems indefinitely and think I never need to service it that's crazy guys that's crazy you're not running a jigsaw you're not running a band sander we're, we're sitting here and we're going through using a robot there's so many different facets to it and it's it's a really cool experience if you keep it cool it's not cool when you have to fix things and the idea is be proactive that's the way all factories are and we have to treat our equipment the same whether they're small or larger it's the same principle so what we've got over here is the next formula for a lead screw. Now, once again, I'm just going to reiterate, if you guys are not using a sprocket and chain, which many of you are not, and you're using a pulley system, this is the formula you will use. Okay, it's the same process. If you're using, you know, whatever drive, you're going to arbitrarily put in whatever drives micro-stepping you're using. Okay, it's, it's just that simple. For a lead screw or ball screw, because they're basically the same in the characteristics, they're vastly different in the quality of motion that's produced. Uh, again, this is just, for example, the lead screw that has a travel of half inch at one turn like a five-star 
and a half inch lead screw using four micro steppings or one quarter. You can see here we've got the 200 again because that, that represents the motor steps. We're multiplying that by four to come up with the product once again, and the four is coming from the micro step setting. And then we divide that and we go with the half inch again, and that's coming right here from the one turn for motion. And again, we come over here to our new formula. It's 800 divided by half inch, and it comes to 1,600 steps per inch, excuse me. Now, again, regardless if you're using a ball screw or using a lead screw, this formula works the same way. There is no different. I really want you guys to think about that. Um, if you're using a ball screw and its travel is 5 millimeters per rotation, you're going to naturally substitute this 0.5 to 5 mil. So, again, it's really not complex. Break each part of the equation down, and you'll pick it up very, very, very quickly. Once again, the formula is not end-all, be-all, but it'll certainly get you in the ballpark to once again go through and do the Mach 3 calibration wizard. And like I said, it gives you a starting point for you guys to take those notes that I've spoken about previously in the video, and you'll use that process that you're creating to really, really learn your system. And any issue that comes up, you'll be able to refer back to those notes should you have to service a system. And like I said, you see these numbers start coming way off or the calibration that you once dialed in is not accurate anymore, you know something, or you should know, something is wrong somewhere. And if it's in a particular axis and your notes represent you're doing your work right and correctly and itemizing everything, you allocate your X, Y, Z, and you notice your Z axis, something here is off, it's you know, 15, 20 thousandths off, you know there's potentially an issue with the Z as far as its transmission, something screwed in, something's loose, these are where you go in and troubleshoot. I cannot be with anybody 100% of the time and teach you how to troubleshoot. Troubleshooting is an art, guys. It really is an art. And doing it at the level I've just discussed, I'm saving you all kinds of money if you implement it. And I cannot emphasize that enough. If somebody has to come out and, and actually go through your system, regardless of your shop size, if you're working in your house, the better you are at troubleshooting, the faster you will digest this entire process of this machine because there's so many facets to it. This is not an end-all, fire-and-forget type system. There's a lot of incorporated parts, a lot of systems working at once, and the more you can actually mitigate all of those excess parts and just sit down and go through and systematically list and understand each of the parts you're working with, you're going to find this to be a very easy process to go through and really dial in your system. So, again, I hope this video has been helpful. I, and I cannot emphasize this enough. I really hope you guys take the time to write down and create your own formula as far as for your particular system. Um, again, I'm always here for questions. Once again, um, and I can't emphasize this enough. I've said this in previous videos. Um, a yes and no question is fine. I'll do anything I can to help anybody. Um, if you're asking me to build an entire system, which seems to be happening more and more frequently, please don't expect me to engineer an entire system for free, guys. I can't do that. I mean, I can't sit and read six paragraphs of what parts you're using and be expected to do that for free. I I'm running a business and no different than many of you. I cannot be expected to do that for free. So if it's something that I can definitely help you with and I will do my best to accommodate everybody, uh, the big thing here is to remember that we respect each other and the time and the knowledge that we all have. I mean, that's something that we all have to do. Um, the big thing here is that this video, I've, I've it's been many requests for it, and truth be told, um, it's kind of overdue in the sense that I've taken for granted that many of you already know this, that are past clients of mine because I've worked with you, but there are so many now um, new potential clients getting involved in CNC and really want to do things the right way. I feel it's, it's really imperative that this video be out there, and I know it's going to streamline a lot of the learning curve. So again, I hope it's helped everybody. I will put the link uh, to James actually going through access calibration and setting rapid motion for his system. You guys can use that. Create your process the way I said, utilizing your own notes. If you guys have questions, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. And, of course, the shop has been ridiculously busy. Um, we're considered an essential business um, due to engineering. So, guys, please uh, be patient with me right now. I mean, things are crazy. Um, but I will get back to you as soon as possible, as always. Thank you all.
take care.